Welcome to this class on deep learning. This is an introductory course set over four major blocks plus an application, which will give you an overview of the basics of multilayer perceptrons, about convolutional neural networks, object detection sequence models, and then some detail on attention and transformers. This is really just something to whet your appetite and to get you excited about deep learning. It's a small subset of what's available in the D2L Dive into Deep Learning book, and I hope that this will be useful for you to get started. The lectures are going to be split into lectures with slides and Jupyter Notebooks, which will walk you through the more practical details of how to build deep learning systems in practice. Let's start out with the very basics, namely MLPs, and we'll start with a very classical subject, namely regression and logistic regression, aka classification. So let's say we want to buy a house. So you might go and you know find a house that you fancy, you take a tour, and then you go and estimate its price and you bid. The problem with house buying is that essentially you're going to pay the price that you bid, no matter whether you know, you're know you the highest bid by a large margin or just barely higher. So let's say you are going to bid five and a half million dollars. Okay, that must be an absolute mansion. And the next highest bidder is bidding four and a half million dollars. Well, then you've overbid by a million, which depending on how you view things, well, is probably an awfully lot of money. Anyway, so maybe you have some listing price from the agent and then, you know, you have some Redfin estimate, which, you know, this company estimates, you know, how much this house will actually sell for. And then you have a set of features like, you know, how many parking spots there are and how close, you know, the next best school is and so on. And you can see this is in a really fancy school district. And so you basically want to build a model such that you can possibly do better than this estimate. Okay, so what we're going to do at first is we're going to build a simple linear model. In other words, we have, for instance, here, y equals, you know, some linear function of x. It's basically ax plus b. Or in a little bit more math, given an n-dimensional input, let's say x is x1 through xn, the linear model has an n-dimensional weight w with coefficients w1 through wn, and some bias. And so then the output is a weighted sum of the inputs. So y equals w1 times x1 plus w2 times x2 all the way up to wn xn plus some constant b. Now, since we're mathematicians and thus lazy, we're going to use more compact notation, namely w transposed x plus b. That's a lot less scary then the previous equation, it's easier to code up and computers like it too, because if we tell them, hey, this is a vectorized instruction, then they can do specific acceleration tricks to compute this. Okay, anyway, if you wanted to view that as a neural network, there you have it on the right hand side, you basically have, you know, D dimensional outputs, inputs turning into an output. Okay. Now the problem is, of course, if you get things right, then you know you don't overpay. If you underbid, well, and you don't get the house, and that's also going to make you unhappy. But if you overbid, well, that's pretty bad. So what you might want to do is you might want to measure the difference between what you paid and what the house actually would have been worth. So you can measure it by a least mean squares. Amount. So in this case, it's just the difference between the price and the price that you estimated squared. And the reason for maybe using that is that afterwards, if we want to optimize, things are very nice. And it also means that this is with a bit more statistics, that if the price was Gaussian, then this would be a really good way of estimating what the true price is. Now, of course, since 
you know, it's going to be a difference between dollars you paid and dollars you should have paid. Maybe the actual difference as opposed to the difference squared is more what matters to your bank account. So maybe the absolute value between Y and Y hat would be more suitable. But as you can see, this really depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. Anyway, so once we set up this problem, well, one thing that we can do is we can set out to minimize the training error. So the training error is the sum over all the mispredictions for historical data where I have all the features of the house and then the values y. And then I just go and, you know, minimize that difference. So that's great. And this will allow me to explain the training data really well. But what I really care about and what I really should be trying to do is to minimize the expected error. Because just based on the historical data, there's no guarantee that in expectation of the new houses that I'm going to be put to the test on, I will actually do well. But that's really what we hope for. Namely that in expectation, the loss between y and f of x, for instance, y minus f of x squared, is minimized. Okay. Now, besides regression, of course, there are a lot of other estimation problems. For instance, you could get, you know, a task of classifying microscope images into 28 categories. For instance, on the protein atlas image classification task on Kaggle. And here are some examples of different pieces of a cell that you need to then, you know, recognize, you know, for instance, you know, whether these are, you know, some Golgi apparatus or a lysosome and so on. And I guess if you're a good biologist, you will just squint it and say, yeah, that looks like uh, perioxomes. Okay. For instance, I probably can't, but some people can. Yeah. So how do we do this? Because this is very different from the regression problem where we had a single continuous output and there was a natural scale in, you know, that output, like if the house costs a million dollars and I estimate a million and five dollars, well, that's pretty good, right? So, and in that case, I can also take the difference between, you know, what I should have done and what I'm doing and things are okay. But what if I estimate that it's a Golgi vesicle and instead of that, it's a nucleus? right? Or it's a digit three versus a digit four, right? So in other words, we have multiple classes, thus typically multiple outputs, and the score should reflect the confidence. So in other words, if the score is really high, then this tells me, well, this is really a nucleus. So what I could do is I could just use something like an uncalibrated scale. So I have one output per class, which is okay if my number of classes isn't too large and we'll get to what to do with more classes later. And then just, just the largest output wins. So now in other words, I just take the arg max over all the outputs. And what I probably want to do is I want to make sure that for the correct class, I'm very confident in recognizing it such that the output for the correct class is much larger than the one for the incorrect class. Okay. So that's good. By the way, the output function is simply output is w times x plus b, where w now is no longer a vector, but it's a matrix. But don't worry because CPUs and in particular GPUs really like matrices. This is very fast. Now, rather than having an uncalibrated scale, I might actually want it to correspond to, for instance, the probability that this is a Golgi apparatus or that it's a telomere or whatever. So <clears throat> in that case, what I need to do is I need to model and map those output scores into probabilities like P of Y given O. And a convenient way is to simply exponentiate everything and divide by the sum of those terms. This is called the softmax. And so, yeah. This is a very simple multinomial logistic regression model. Now the negative log likelihood loss is fairly straightforward and 
by the way, why do people care about the negative log likelihood? Well, typically we want to maximize the likelihood of the, out, of the labels being properly explained by the outputs. So I want to maximize P of Y given O. Unfortunately, if I do that, well, you know, if I have a product of a multiple terms, then I want to maximize the product of a many terms. That's inconvenient. Instead of that, people typically like to minimize things and they like to minimize sums. So rather than the product of a many terms, I take the negative logarithm of the latter. That's completely equivalent, right? And so then I end up minimizing the negative log of P of Y given O, and that's now the sum over, you know, the corresponding terms, sum, you know, log sum x e to the oi minus oy, that's the corresponding term. And then it would sum over all the train data. So in short, again, what we do is we want to minimize the training error. And then the expected error so is exactly the same as what we have before in the regression case, just that we now have a much more complicated loss function. Namely, we want to minimize the expected log likelihood, negative log likelihood. So why is this a good idea? Well, that's effectively the number of extra bits that I have to pay between what I'm predicting and what actually happens. I could also try to simply minimize the misclassification error, but that's not differentiable, not smooth and so on. And so this makes life a lot harder, which is why people go with the other term. There's a lot of really nice statistical theory, which tells you that minimizing the negative log likelihood is consistent under many conditions. So in other words, this is safe. So in summary, what we do is, do is we have some training data. Usually we have a label training set of XI, YI pairs. We have some unlabeled test data. And our objective is to minimize the distance between the Y's and the F of X's. And in classification, we want to optimize the match between the Y's and the argmax J of F of XJ. And for regression, we just have a simple, simple linear function W transpose X plus B, and for classification, well, we have a matrix vector multiply. So the goal, of course, of this game, and this is what we're doing in this deep learning class, is how to find those weights W and, well, biases B, basically linear offsets, but in general, when people talk about weights, they mean all the parameters of a network, so I'm going to be loose here and just talk about weights W. And what we're going to do in the rest of this course, is we're going to look at ways how to find those weights. Now, there's a lot more to this than what I just alluded to. And there are four book chapters that you might want to look at. So if you look at d2l.ai, you should check out the linear networks chapter and in particular the regression, regressions from scratch, and softmax regression and softmax regression from scratch chapters. So note that so far we haven't talked at all yet about how do we actually get those parameters and that'll be the topic of the next section. But before we do that, we will dive a little bit into some Python code in order to actually try out how this works in practice.